Hi and welcome to this video where I'm going to talk about the bonding present in ionic compounds and touch briefly on their properties. The reason why ionic compounds have these particular properties will be explained in more detail in a subsequent video. Okay, so what do we know about ionic compounds? These should be the ones that you are most familiar with having completed NCEA Level 1. So ionic compounds are made from ions. Ions are charged particles, usually an atom that has gained or lost an electron because it wants to get a full outer shell of electrons. It could also be um, a polyatomic ion, which is a group of atoms with one or more electrons either gained or lost as well. That's also a possibility. Um, atoms, and of course, form ions when they gain or lose electrons to get a full outer shell of electrons. Usually metals lose electrons and they form positively charged ions known as cations and non-metals gain electrons to form negatively charged anions. So this is quite important because when you're trying to identify is a compound an ionic compound, then one of the things to ask yourself is what types of atoms is it made of? If it's made of a metal and a non-metal, the chances are it's an ionic compound. It's certainly not going to be metallic and it's highly unlikely to be molecular. Okay, so positive and negative, cation and anion, metal and non-metal. That's what's making up our ionic compounds. Now these ionic compounds form large three-dimensional networks or lattices of our anions and cations. They're held together by what we call electrostatic forces or ionic bonds. These electrostatic forces are the attraction between the positive cation and the negative anion. And the bonds are directional. They are between specific ions. Okay, and that becomes quite important when we start explaining the properties. But probably the most important thing to be aware of is that the formula of an ionic compound describes the ratio of the ions. Okay, so if you think of sodium chloride, NaCl, all that's telling you is that for every sodium ion, there is a chloride ion. There is no such thing, and let me say this very, very clearly, there is no such thing as an as a molecule of sodium chloride with one sodium ion and one chloride ion. They just don't exist like that. Okay, what you have is this three-dimensional lattice consisting of millions or billions or trillions or more than that of ions, all alternating. In this case, in sodium chloride's case, you've got one sodium ion for each chloride ion. So you've got equal numbers of both ions because that's the ratio in the formula one to one. It's obviously going to be different in different substances. Okay, so I cannot stress this enough. Ionic compounds do not form molecules. Okay, there is no discrete unit of sodium chloride with one sodium ion and one chloride ion. It does not happen. What you have is this latter situation, right? where your positive ions are attracted to the surrounding negative ions and your negative ions are attracted to your surrounding positive ions. Meanwhile, also, your positive ions are repelling the other positive ions and your negative ions are repelling the other negative ions. So there's this constant kind of battle. Now, the way the lattice looks is going to depend on the formula, on the charges of the ions, the ratio of the ions. Okay, so sodium chloride is a nice simple one looks a bit like that not really but you know but they're all different so here's a few examples so the bottom left hand one is your sodium chloride plus one ion and a minus one ion compare that to the one on the top right hand corner which is zinc sulfide which is still a one-to-one -one ratio but instead of being plus one and minus one zinc and sulfur are plus two and minus two so the shape of the lattice is different Calcium fluoride in the top left, that's a 1 to 2 ratio. And Li3Bi in the bottom right, that's a 3 to 1 ratio. And you can see that although there's this lattice, and it's not usually quite as spread out as this shows, 
it forms very interesting shapes. Now, the structure of the lattice comes down to affects all sorts of things, like how the crystals form and the shapes of the crystals and all sorts of other really cool things, because these are largely crystalline solids at room temperature. So you think salt. Salt is a crystal. You have salt crystals, right? I think copper sulfate. You may have made copper sulfate crystals when you were in year nine. All those sorts of things. These are all ionic compounds and they form these crystals and the crystals have some really cool shapes. But the shapes that the crystals form is largely dependent on the, the lattice structure within the substance. You don't need to get into that, but it's worth being aware of. Okay, so key things in terms of properties. Okay, ionic solids are hard crystals that are brittle. If you've ever dropped a crystal of copper sulfate, you will have seen it shatter into much smaller pieces. Or if you've smashed a big salt crystal with a hammer. Okay, they have generally relatively high boiling and melting points. If you think it's actually, like if you put a, some dry salt in a pan and you put it on your stove, how high would you have to heat it for it to turn into a liquid? That's really what we're talking about when we're talking about the melting point. If you can do it, well, maybe not on a home stove, but you can do it if you've got a high enough temperature. Okay, so they have relatively high boiling and melting points in general. I don't think there's any that are under about 100 degrees anyway. They typically dissolve in water. Now, not every ionic solid does dissolve in water, but most of them do. And finally, we come down to the electrical conductivity, which is a little bit tricky. Okay. Ionic solids do not, if I took a block of salt and I connected up an electrode to it, one to each side, it wouldn't conduct electricity. But if I take that block of salt and I dissolve it in water, then I stick my electrodes in, then it will conduct electricity. So it conducts electricity as a solid, not as a solid, but as a dissolved solution or as a molten liquid. So if you take your sodium chloride and you heat it up to about 800 degrees so that it melts, then you can stick electrodes in it and it will conduct electricity perfectly fine. In the next video, we're going to talk about why ionic solids have these properties coming back to the bonding present within those compounds. I hope to see you there. Catch you later.